to be talking about bouldering and a little bit about rock climbing, but mainly bouldering. And while I'm talking, I'm going to use this whiteboard and kind of illustrate some things and also crumble some gym chalk that I have. So that's one of my favorite triggers. It's kind of like an oddly satisfying trigger. Just breaking and crumbling some chalk. Okay. So the first thing we can talk about is what is bouldering? So there are four types of rock climbing. We have, and forgive my handwriting, bouldering. So bouldering is basically, that's a rock. Bouldering is when someone climbs a rock and there's usually a pad. So when they fall, they land on the pad. Um, so there's indoor bouldering at a gym, which is what I do mainly. And then there's outdoors. Okay, so I hope you kind of get the gist. You're basically just climbing up a rock. Um, yeah. And two, we have top roping. Which is, which is when you have an incline and there's an anchor, which is a hook at the top. And you have one person who's climbing and one person who's belaying, 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 belaying. And this person is attached to a rope that goes through the anchor, and this belayer helps them not fall, if that makes sense, and gives them slack so they can climb up. Trad climbing and trad stands for traditional and this is where you have a mountain or a rock and as the person goes up they put in their own anchors so there's no anchors there but there's still someone belaying Then fourth, sport climbing. And sport climbing is when there's already some anchors for you. And you have one person who goes up. Sorry, that does not look like a person. And they hook their rope through each anchor as they go up, and they still have a belayer down here who are connected. So the first person who goes up is called lead climbing. It's called lead climbing. And once they're up, they put the rope through the top loop, and then it goes kind of back top roping. Okay, so I guess that's the basics. Um, like I said, I'm going to be mainly focusing on bouldering today. I also want to talk about the different kinds of rock surfaces you can climb. So, it's kind of based on degrees. So if it's straight up, at a 90 degree angle
that's called vertical. If it's greater than 90 degrees, then it's slab. So that's the only kind of outdoor climbing that I've ever done is slab. So it's kind of easy. And this is not bouldering. This is using a rope, using gear. And then you have overhang, which takes a lot of arm and core strength you're hanging on. Yeah, so that's less than 90 degrees. Okay. So the last thing that I want to talk about is the grades. So this is basically the difficulty ranking. So for climbing with gear, it's sorted by 5.x, where this x changes. So 5.1 through 5.4 is beginner. 5.7 intermediate 5.7 through 5.10 we have advanced and 5.10 through 5.15 is expert I guess I should change this to a to a 4 Bouldering, though, we have this V system, where it's VX. So, well, let me just erase this. So, for bouldering, we have beginner is about V0, and intermediate is like V1 through V2. And then V3 through V5 is advanced, and V6 through V10 is expert. Oh gosh, sorry, I'm getting kind of crazy there. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of intermediate to advanced, I would say. I've been doing it for about a year now, bouldering, and almost exclusively in a gym. Okay, so that's enough for the lesson. Well, so I want to talk about some of the gear that we have. So we have a bag to carry the chalk. Um, you can see that mine is very well loved. You can see the chalk inside. So you hook it onto your belt. These here. And you reach behind you and dip your hand in the chalk before you go for your next hold. It's so dirty. <laughs> shoes that are super curved in and they're like this. <laughs> um, these are the first pair of shoes that I have that I've bought and they work really well for me, though 
I think I would prefer to have slip-on or velcro next time because tying the shoes is kind of a pain So the nice thing about bouldering is you really don't need much. Um, you don't even need chalk. You just basically need shoes. Um, but a lot of people do have a brush that you ch -ch 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 clean the rock if there's too much chalk and it's not um, good friction. So I don't have one of those. But to give you an idea, I have this brush. Let me move this shoe out of the way. I have this brush. So it doesn't look like this. The brush that boulder bouldering uses is kind of like a toothbrush, but it's got the same bristles. It's pretty firm. And you just. is actually for your body. It's a dry brusher, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea. the stage that I'm in is transitioning from climbing from the gym to outdoor climbing. So, I don't have a bouldering pad yet. Uh, the gym that I go to has thick pads at the bottom, so I'm gonna have to buy one of those if I want to do bouldering outdoors. So I bought this little guide. I thought I would read just a small section from it. And it's Cliff Sustainability and Responsible Use. One of the first things a climber will need to appreciate about an outdoor environment is that climbers can have a measurable and destructive impact on the natural environment if they do not behave. Thoughtfully, conscientiously, and skillfully. Most noticeably, climbers have an opportunity to behave in a manner that sustain sustains the resource not only for their own use, but also for future generations. So let me show you some pictures, actually, too, while we're at it. So this is what a bouldering gym looks like. So you can see, hopefully the shine isn't too much on this, but you can see all the little handholds they install in the gym. And how my gym works is it's by color, so if you wanted to do a, a pink, which is like a V7 or so, you would follow the pink all the way to the top. This book talks about all these different kinds of climbing, like crack climbing, which is where you climb up a crack in the rock and you use some pretty crazy grips. There, so you stick your hand inside or your feet. Let's get to chalk crushing. So, I bought a giant bag of chalk, especially for this video. So I'm gonna pick out the pieces here. I'm definitely 
going to get this all out of my bedroom. I tried finding it in the big block at my local REI, but they only had this guy. if you have a bouldering gym near you to give it a try um, so yeah I started about a year ago and it's my favorite sport right now I love how you can do it outdoors or indoors and there's just a really great community for actually kind of hard to, to crush <laughs> but yeah um, I definitely was scared at first especially climbing to the top I'm not super scared of heights but I find that when it comes to that last jump when you're really high up or that last reach that you're scared of making, I'm such a weenie. I'll wear my Fitbit and my heart will be at like 150 racing because I'm so scared. But you get used to it um, and I've never hurt myself. You just have to learn how to fall into the pad um, without hurting your knees or your ankles. Out of dust in the air. Rock climbing's a bit harder to get started on because, at least outdoors, you need so much equipment. It's probably hundreds of dollars to get started, so I've been putting that off. is also fun, especially in gyms, because you can bring a large group of your friends, and it's like a group activity. And I'll take friends who have never been, and they're scared, and you know, they try it, and it's so much fun. You just feel like a little kid climbing over things again. And it also builds some really good arm muscles and back muscles, and Pretty much muscles that you didn't know you could exercise, at least for me. Um, as a woman, I was a little intimidated going into it because I thought that it was all arm strength and that I wouldn't be able to do it, but you know, some people say that women make really good climbers because they rely on their legs a lot and that helps you get to places that sometimes men struggle to get to by just brute forcing their way in with their arm strength. Also, if you're watching this far, let me know what you think of the two camera setup. 
I don't have much experience with editing, but I thought I'd try something different. I think some people who stumbled on my last book video where I was talking about my favorite books didn't know what ASMR was, and so this was very strange to them. So if you're watching this and you don't know what ASMR is, this is not a truly educational video. This is a video designed to help people relax or sleep with a little bit of education, educational insight in there. So I'm not an expert, um, and a lot of my videos are pretty rambly, so just a, a preface if you're confused. <laughs> Alright, this is a big one. reminds me that another big thing in bouldering is grip strength. Since I started climbing bouldering, I had arm muscles for the first time in my life, so that was fun. to the mic. Okay guys, well now that I'm covered in chalk, I think that's a good place to end the video. I think I want to do more videos like this where I talk about some of my hobbies, like oil painting and you know, backpacking, some other outdoor stuff. So if that sounds interesting, go ahead and leave a comment, and I hope you guys learned a little something. Like I said, I'm not anywhere close to being an expert, so if I was wrong about something, go ahead and let me know. Um, yeah. Okay. Good night, guys. I hope you sleep super, super, super well tonight. Until next time.